you are tuned in to the NUC NFL Draft Bible Players Spotlight Show. Welcome back to another episode of the NUC NFL Draft Bible Player Spotlight Show presented by the College Gridiron Showcase and Symposium. We recently dropped our watch list for the 2017 College Gridiron Showcase, and that can be viewed at CGS All Star. Dot com where it isn't too late to nominate players as well. So if you're interested, again, cgsallstar.com. The College Gridiron Showcase kicks off January 7th and goes on through January 11th in Bedford, Texas. And, of course, for the best NFL draft coverage, visit nfldraftbible.com. Established in 2002, NFL Draft Bible has been bringing you the names that you need to know first since 2002. As always, I am your host, Chris Shanafelt. And I'm really excited to welcome on to the show this afternoon. He's one of the top quarterbacks in all the FCS. Uh, we're making our way back to Fordham University. Last week we had on his tight end, uh, Faison Odom, and it's now a pleasure to welcome on to the show, again, the man under center there for the Fordham Rams. He's Kevin Anderson. Uh, Kevin, how are we doing this afternoon? I'm doing pretty well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Really appreciate you taking some time out of your afternoon to join the show. Now, I've been on record a number of times, Kevin. Uh, you know, I, I've been raving about you guys, the talent that you guys have on that roster. Um, being a quarterback, being the quarterback of the Fordham Rams heading into the 2016 season, I mean, how much how much easier does it make your job when, when, you, when you're when you throwing to a 6'8 target in Faison Odom and you're handing the ball off to, uh, you know, the best running back in the FCS and Chase Edmonds? I mean, the talent you have surrounded around you, not only on the offensive side of the ball, but, of course, defensively as well. I mean, uh, what, what's it like to, to go to to go to go battle with this, uh, this group of talent? Well, it's honestly a blessing. Um, Chase was my roommate all last year. Faison's my roommate every summer, and we all stay summer – both summer sessions, and there's a good core group of us, about 25 of us, so we get really close. So it's been a blessing just because not only are they incredible athletes, Faison being an incredible mismatch in every part of the field and chasing a home run back on, at any point, give a handoff and go for 80, 90 at any point. So just having those kind of athletes have incredible work ethic like they do and just us being, being able to build that friendship and that bond where we just push each other every single day has definitely been a blessing for me because it's just – couple guys that I can go to war with every single day and that that's not just them there's a lot of the guys on the team that are like that but it is just a blessing to be on the team with them and, and me being a far obviously I, I'm in Chicago I could kind of see uh you know kind of the the uh brotherhood that you guys have there just through Twitter and just through Instagram just through social media alone uh just seeing how how, how much you guys actually interact with each other uh, you know <laughs> joke around and all that it's absolutely great to see now with that said I, I do not want to discredit what you were able to do last season Kevin I mean uh, you had some pretty big shoes to fill as you had to replace an all-time great there at Fordham and uh, quarterback Michael Niebrick and, and uh, you know, things got off to a pretty rough start in that first game of the season when you fumbled on the first play against Army. But uh, as they say, you got to have a short memory when playing the game of football, and uh, you can't get too high, you can't get too low. Uh, so you were able to bounce back from uh, from that play and throw over uh, 320 yards and walk away with the victory in your first career start. Um, very impressive to say the least. And then uh, for the season as a whole, I mean, you completed, I believe it was 67% of your passes, nearly 3,200 yards, 32 touchdowns. And, of course, when needed, you, you made plays uh, on the run as well as you rushed for uh, 340 yards and five more touchdowns. Um, how would you describe the season that you had a year ago? And uh, what, what have you guys done during the off season to make sure – uh, that you guys could make it past the first round of the FCS playoffs uh, this time around? Um, well, last year was a special year for me. I uh, Obviously, I was transferred to Fordham from Marshall University. I happened to uh, shatter my collarbone my senior season in high school, about week two. So I didn't get to play my whole senior year and enrolled early at Marshall and was hurt. So I was hurt, coaches left, came to Fordham, and it was almost like I got to college and was like, I haven't proven myself. So it was, it was almost like something for me and uh, being able to have the season that I had or even if just the slightest success would have been able to give me the confidence and swagger that I needed back. Because growing up, where I'm from South Florida and I always had the mentality that you just got to be the best you can be and just work hard and, and try and be great. And then you got to have the mentality of being great every day. So it's almost like when you go through an injury like that where we're having to rehabilitate your throwing arm and just reteach yourself how to throw kind of diminishes your confidence a little. And so it's almost like being able to have 
uh, the season that we had with, I think it was like 16 new starters, a um, bunch of freshman starters. In the last, like, I think four games of the season after we lost Robbie Cantelli, we started four freshman receivers. So it was just, it was a big, it was a big season for us. And it definitely valid, it, it was able to let me validate my own confidence, um, especially bouncing back, getting a FBS win. Um, just that, that entire game, that entire season was really, in, uh, really confidence in my overall play going into this year. And, and you know, I rattled off the stats, but I mean, r- really, I mean, the, the tape, at least from what I saw, um, and and I, I've taken a lot of time to watch some of the talent that you guys have there at Fordham, but, um, you know, the tape really does back up what you see in the stat line. And you mentioned all the new starters. You've you seen it there in that first game against Army that, you know, it took a little bit of time for you guys to gel. You guys were able to walk away with the victory there, and you just seen the, the team get stronger and stronger as the, as the season went on. You guys finished with a 9-3 and three overall record a year ago. And uh, this time around, you guys have a lot of those uh, new starters from a year ago returning uh, this year. So, obviously, looking uh, for bigger and better things in uh, 2016. Now, uh, Kevin, was there any uh, anything specific that you wanted to focus on improving throughout the off season? Was there anything that you felt the need to work on uh, during your time away from the team uh, this off season? Um, yeah, I mean, every off season is just huge. I feel it's almost like once the season ends, you get a couple months under your belt, and you look back and reflect, and you're like, and, and you almost look at yourself and you're like, wow, the things I could have done, the things I know now. And so every off season is just huge it's like big glowing because like you don't even actually go to practice with uh, seven on sevens and full team periods, but it's just, you get time to focus on the little, uh, the little, the little things involved. And I took this whole off season and uh, I have a quarterback coach da- down in uh, South Florida named Eric Cresser out of Palm Beach gardens. And uh, he's been training me since I was about in eighth grade. And so uh, we kind of re- retouched my uh, throwing motion a little bit. And so this whole off season, I've been uh, trying to adapt to a new, more of like a body throw versus an all arm throw. And I've gotten very comfortable with it. And it's just, it's something that just looks better for the future. Um, It's smoother. It's better for your arm. So just something like that, that specifically was something I've been working on and toying with every single day, just getting the reps in so I can get it back to a natural throwing motion that it's always been. And, uh, and then always just studying film, Uh, studying film. And we've actually had a big influence on uh, speed training this, this off season, almost every day, there's about 15, 20, 30 of us, me, Chase, Faison, Caleb Ham, George Dawson, a lot of us will go out on the field and do ladders, sleds every day after our other workouts. So we've got a very hardworking team, and this off season has been very good to us so far. Yeah, it sounds like uh, sounds like you guys are focused on uh, really just becoming a, a better overall player, at least for you and the things that you've uh, done so far this off season. Um, now looking at, you know, I got to ask team expectations. I mean, I, I went back and uh, did some research. Only one team from the Patriot League has ever made an appearance in the FCS national championship game. Uh, and that was Colgate back in 2003. Yep. And uh, I know that, uh, that that's obviously your guys' number one goal. And, and you guys aren't alone in that, as you know, I mean, every other team in the FCS has that same goal as well to make it to Frisco, te- Texas and uh, lift the trophy uh, at the end of the day. Um, I, I got to ask you, though, I mean, I, I know, uh, obviously, I'm very high on you, you guys and, and the talent that you guys have, uh, I, at least on paper and what we've seen uh, from last season. But do you feel that th- with this group of guys that you guys have returning uh, and, and the guys that you guys have now at Fordham University that you guys have what it takes to, to be that last team standing in Frisco, Texas? I mean, is that the, the team's number one goal? Yeah, I think I think almost that's definitely our number one goal. I mean, we have a, a big, big core group of returning starters. And now guys that are, are just getting they, – they got their feet wet last year, and now they're really starting to hit their stride, a lot of the young guys. So it's almost as right now, like, we believe that we have the pieces to get to where we want to go. It's just a matter of putting them together. And I think in the offseason right now, it's too early to tell how good we could be or where we're at as a program. I mean, by the end of camp, it would, I'd, I'd have a better understanding. But, uh, I'm just looking forward to this camp coming up for us to gel – and just get better with each other. We, the whole whole off season, we've been trying to breed just a savage mentality that if you don't, if you're not out here working, getting that extra work in, trying to do whatever you can to help the squad, then you gotta you gotta get with it or get out. So we kind of breed this savage mentality where everyone is grinding as much as they can whenever they can, and it's been it's been uh, permeating throughout the team. And we've got a really good core core value set and a great culture. 
So as long as we just do the things and focus one at a time, there's not, I can't really put my tongue on a, how are we going to do what potential we have our goals. And it's just, we got to believe in the process and work all we can to get and uh, obtain those goals. Yeah, absolutely. A savage mentality. I absolutely love it. I think it's safe to say that the sky is the limit for you guys. And it almost sounds as if that, uh, that that's kind of how you feel about the group, uh, at least right now before camp. And, uh, of course, before we can focus on a national championship game, we have a whole season to play. And, of course, we still have to focus on the conference at uh, the conference first. Um, and it really does seem like the Patriot League has gotten stronger and stronger year by year over the last handful of years uh, with, of course, Fordham, Lehigh, Bucknell, Holy Cross. I mean, there's a ton of competition without a doubt. Have you been able to notice the jump in talent uh, in the Patriot League since you've arrived? Yes, I actually have. Honestly, uh, looking back, um, I feel like Patriot League hasn't never had a good rep. And uh, lately, like especially this season, I feel like there's a lot of talent on every team. The big transition about, I think, three or four years ago in the Patriot League, the majority of the Patriot League went full scholarship. I think that finally put us on par with the rest of the FCS. So these big programs that we're now seeing in the playoffs, they've had scholarships a lot longer. So, I mean, they're going to naturally get more talent. It's not that they're at an advantage. I mean, it's just a natural part of the game. So now that the whole league, the majority of the league, except for Georgetown, I believe, has scholarships. So you're, you're seeing us being able to pull better athletes from different parts of the nation, wanting to get a better education and play football. So every team, Lehigh, Colgate, um, Holy Cross, we've all been – every team has a lot of really good players, and, and the whole league is just getting better as a whole. And you Again, see it especially with Anderson. how Colgate, uh, Colgate, they're running the playoffs. That was honestly mm-hmm. trem- surprising and tremendous. Like, at the end of the day, they, they did a really great job and made a deep run. So that was good for our, pro- yeah. our, uh, our conference mm-hmm. as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like you said, a, a very deep run into the FCS playoffs. Um, and, and, you know, the game that you guys had against them last season, I mean, that, that was a, a must-watch yeah. game. Uh, <laughs> and it did not disappoint. Uh, not, nope. not at all. Uh, again, he's Kevin Anderson, the quarterback for the Fordham Rams here on the NUC NFL Draft Bible Player Spotlight Show presented by the College Gridiron Showcase. I am your host, Chris Shanafel. And, Kevin, just a few more questions for you, and then we'll let you go again. Really do appreciate you taking some time this afternoon. Um, you guys yeah, did take a big hit to the coaching staff as head coach Joe Moorhead uh, took the offensive coordinator job over at Penn State. Offensive coordinator Andrew Reiner now takes over as head coach. Uh, what was your initial reaction when you first heard the news that Moorhead was moving on to Penn State? I know it's been a few months now, uh, but uh, what, what kind of impact do you think that this change has had on you guys since that move has changed, and how much of an impact will it have on you guys uh, moving forward during the season? Um, well, it's hard to say uh, right now, but um, Coach Moorhead was obviously a great coach, and we totally understand uh, going to Penn State. I mean, that's just it's the college college football business the aspect. He's got a family he's got to feed, and we all respect his grind and his the work and the, the dream he laid out in front of us and the plan he put forth. Um, he always told us that it's the next man in mentality, and that's the kind of mentality we wanted to bring every year. Once Michael Geiger and I had to come in and just perform as good, if not better, and the same list goes on and on at every position. So uh, we got a really good coach now, uh, Coach Briner. He steps in, and he's going to be expected to do just as good, if not better. And I know that I, I know, and I'm confident that he will. I had a lot of time working with Coach Briner because he was my quarterback coach last year, and uh, and he's a great coach, has a very good uh, like management mindset. He's extremely um, focused, and he knows what he wants, and he knows how to get it. He's uh, he, he's very he goes about his business in an extremely professional way, but does it from like almost a managerial aspect where he knows that he has to make sure we get our work like this, or you have to do this to get these results. And so keeping a very focused, structured approach, it's almost like the methodical way that he teaches me to go about my pre-snap progressions and how our entire playbook is run. So that's how he's almost using what he, how he teaches the quarterback and how he's running his program. So uh, in addition, we also, like just because we lost Coach Moorhead, we actually gained another great coach as well. Coach Davis is our – Coach Joe Davis is our new quarterback coach, and he was the uh, offense coordinator at Northern Iowa, and they made a deep run in the playoffs last year. And so we were fortunate enough to grab him, and uh, he's been a great asset. Him and Coach Briner just work extremely well together, and uh, he's another young guy, and they, they just – they feed off each other. They're both two offensive minds. 
Uh, Coach Davis called plays for, I think, 11 years in his offense and is now incumbent to Coach Viner. Or Coach Viner's calling plays. So those two minds together have just had, had little wrinkles to our offense that we didn't have last year that are just going to make us a little bit better. And uh, so just having him around, and he's a great, great man just to teach and uh, mentor me and my fellow quarterback has just been a blessing. And uh, we look forward to seeing what these two coaches combined can do for us offensively. Yeah, it's certainly going to be something to watch out for. I mean, it uh, does not sound like we should expect any drop-off at all. And, uh, you know, I really do think that hiring from within and promoting uh, Coach Briner to the uh, to the head coaching job, I think that is definitely the right thing to do. And uh, really That's excited nice. to see uh, how things go this season. Again, your guys' first game uh, is just over a month away, September 3rd at Navy. Uh, take us through what your schedule looks like from now until then. I mean, when does camp get started? Uh, well, we actually report um, to camp uh, August 7th, I believe. But uh, I've been uh, here for the whole summer, and uh, we, we have workout 6 a.m., and I've been doing an lo- internship at a law firm for eight hours every day, Monday through Friday. So I'm finally done. Today's my last day, and I'm getting uh, we get about a, a week off to go home to Florida and train and recover and then support for camp, and then camp goes, and it's on the Navy. So about a week away from the real, real – start of the grind where every day is football 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 hey very exciting stuff congratulations of course uh on the internship and again really appreciate you taking the time final question uh i asked you about team expectations got to ask you about individual expectations i mean is there anything you have written down that you'd like to uh that you'd like to see yourself uh, succeed in this year uh no i actually i'm not really i don't really it doesn't matter to me honestly as long as i just pray that my teammates and my friends stay healthy on the field and that we have, we're blessed with just a, a great season. Well, however it goes, as long as we get a win, that's all that really matters to me. The only stat I really care about is uh, um, efficiency. The QBR rating, that's like my favorite thing because it just shows that you're not doing anything to hurt your guys. We all put in so much work. I just want what's best for us. So. Hey, I, I can't say I, I I can't say I didn't expect that answer. Uh, again, uh, Kevin, really appreciate you taking some time this afternoon. Really, uh, de- just wishing you a very successful and, and of course a healthy season. Again, going to be a lot of fun. Any final words? Uh, no, thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate all the uh, the positive media you you give us in our program, and uh, I look forward to talking to you soon. Yeah, without a doubt, you guys have certainly earned it. Again, there he goes. Uh, fantastic quarterback out of Fordham University, uh, Kevin Anderson. Again, wishing him all the best of luck. Certainly one of the best quarterbacks in all the FCS. And uh, like Kevin, I mean, I, I also have some very big expectations for this Fordham Rams team. Uh, I got to say, I don't think there is a, a single offense in the FCS that has as much talent uh, on the offensive side of the ball than uh, Fordham University. So certainly be on the lookout for them beginning September 3rd against Navy. Uh, Again, special thanks to Kevin Anderson, the Fordham quarterback, for calling in this afternoon. And as always, I am your host, Chris Shanafelt, for the NFL Draft Bible, bringing you the names that you need to know first since 2002. Visit NFLDraftBible.com. Use the 30-day free promo code DRAFT2016.